Now that the Marauders are casting out of the way, it's time to take on the Harry Potter film that had the most potential, Harry Potter and the Cobbler of Fire. We're recasting Harry Potter for a TV series, so this is part 4, so please check out the first 3 parts before getting to this one. And thank you to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. Stay tuned after the casting to check out some free rewards for signing up now. So Goblet of Fire. It's the first time we see Voldemort fully formed on screen in all his glory. This one has Mad-Eye Moody, Cedric Diggory, Barty Crouch Jr. Some really great Harry Potter characters. It's worth noting that Goblet of Fire actually has a lot more characters than any of the other films. There's a solid 10 plus I could potentially cast. So therefore I'm going to focus on the bigger ones that I feel needs a specific actor. That being said, let's recast Harry Potter in the Goblet of Fire. As always, let's start off with the Defense Against the Dark Arts post. This time, it's held by Mad-Eye Moody, famous Auror who actually wears his battles on his face and body, and he acts like a survivor. There's no nonsense, and very distrusting of others. He pretty much doesn't take shit from nobody, and he doesn't act like something he's not. Although some of the characters in the Harry Potter universe are described as coming from a specific place in the UK, I feel like being a Scot is extra important to this character. I mean, he wears a kilt to the Yule Ball. That's why I think Rory McCann would be amazing as Mad-Eye. He's rough around those edges, just like the character. Looks mean and menacing, and really has that voice. And he's also a Scot, which is necessary. I think he would knock it out of the park. We've seen him play a less PG version of the character in Game of Thrones. You think you wanted revenge a long time? I've been after it all my life. It's all I care about. And look at me. Look at me! You want to be like me? And he's absolutely wonderful. So Rory McCann as Mad-Eye Moody. Now Goblet of Fire is all about the Triwizard Cup, so it's important we cast the Hogwarts champion himself, Cedric Diggory. Now I did say in the previous videos that I wouldn't cast the younger actors. I'm not breaking it completely though. I still don't want a really well-known actor in this part. I think it would take away from the character if he had a really recognizable face. So I want someone up and coming. And I think I found the perfect choice, George McKay. I know a lot of people probably don't know his name, but his face might be a little bit familiar. He was in 1917 and amazing in it. We're going to catch up. Please, put me down. Sit. Let me sit. No, we can't. We have to find the second, remember? Your brother. We have to go. He also Come played on. an amazing role in two lesser known films, Pride and Captain Fantastic. I've actually watched his career developed and he's always impressed me. I think he would be amazing as Cedric. He has a soft, warm presence. He has a nice guy personality and is very handsome. And his face isn't something that you'd attach to a really iconic role. He's one of the best young actors to watch today. So George McKay as Cedric Dickery. As for Victor Crumb and Fleur Delacour, I would love to see some actors actually from Bulgaria and from France. I do have some names down, but honestly, I don't want to see a big face in these roles, and I'd rather search the population from those countries than casting someone right here and right now. Next, let's talk about Barty Crouch Jr. A small role, but an important one. He's described as a young, pale male with straw-colored hair. He has an unkept mop of hair, and he's intensely hateful, diabolical, vengeful, cold, manipulative, you know, all the fun stuff. Pretty much it comes down to just Barty Crouch Jr. being insane and being a sociopath. He needs to be played by someone who can really portray that unhingedness. It is important that we can have someone who can sit down in the Ministry of Magic going unnoticed, but also has that unkept version of themselves with his hair astray and crazy. If you've ever seen Legion before, you've seen the wonderful Dan Stevens, who I think would nail Barty Crouch Jr. He's played the crazy. I think you're about to find out. If you've ever seen The Guest, you've seen the dramatic pressure side of Dan as well. As well, he's incredible in Downton Alley. He passes off as that high class. Honestly, this man can do it all. He can go incredibly big if he wanted and isn't really afraid to do anything. So Dan Stevens as Barty Crouch Jr. As for his father, Barty Crouch Sr., it's a completely different type of character. He's devoted to his work to a fault, strict and very to the point. He's in a very high position at the ministry. And when you hear this line, You are no son of mine. I instantly think to one actor. Charles Dance, his super serious nature, an intense manner could really provide a firmer side that we didn't see in the first iteration. It's the family name that lives on. It's all that lives on. 
Not your personal glory, not your honor, but family. I could see him in the ministry, judging over others, all while casting his son aside. So for Barty Crouch Sr., Charles Dance. Next up, we have Rita Skeeter, the uncompromising journalist who will stop at nothing for a story. She's manipulative and walks you into exactly what she wants you to say. I believe Rosamund Pike would be great in this role, especially after seeing her in Gone Girl. I mean, she wouldn't play it nearly as big, but I could feel her intensity and that manipulation and her putting on that face that she did so well in Gone Girl. A, I'm an award-winning scrimshander. B, I'm a moderately influential warlord. Hmm. C, I write personality quizzes for magazines. Okay. She's an underused actor today, and she'd show us a much more grounded performance of the character, but it would be really interesting. So Rosamund Pike as Rita Skeeter. As for Ludo Bengman, someone we did not see in the original adaptation, it's revealed he has gambling problems and was a previous professional athlete. But most important, he's kind of an idiot. I've always seen this character as someone past his prime. Give him more of a gut, and I think John Barrowman would be unbelievable. He's amazing in Doctor Who, plays that egotistical character that can sometimes be misfounded. Ah, you miss me, right? But he's silly and has comedic timing to his portrayal. And he has everything that Ludo Begman should be. So John Barrowman as Ludo Begman. Now there are a couple more roles that I want to cast off quickly before moving on to Baltimore. Like Madame Maxine, who the clear choice is Gwendolyn Christie. Or Karkaroff, Vladimir Mashkov would work extremely well in the role. Now it's on to the one, the only, he who must not be named the big bad of the entire series, and the one who requires the most skill of any actor I've casted. It's important that he's older, because by the time of his death, Voldemort is over 70. Of course, he spent many of those years either drinking unicorn blood or being tucked behind a turban, so I'm not gonna go too old. The actor still has to have enough mobility to work his way around a fight scene. One of the best villains of all time requires one of the best actors of all time. Someone who isn't afraid of going big, has all the subtleties in his performance. There's no better actor on the planet than Daniel Day-Lewis. And that's why I want to see exactly what he would do in the noseless skin of Voldemort. I mean, Daniel Day-Lewis transforms and he's a method actor, meaning it would be really interesting to see those stories from set. Everything from there will be blood. I drink your milkshake. I drink it up. To Gangs of New York. Rose back up again with a full heart and bury them in his own blood. He brings another layer of dimension to the character that wasn't previously there. He grabs that text in that script and makes it something wonderful to watch on screen. And I believe that Daniel Day-Lewis really thrives in these roles of villainy. He'd have to come out of retirement for this role, but I feel like these are one of those roles that defines a career, so he might just do it. So Daniel Day-Lewis for Lord Voldemort. Thanks again to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. If you haven't heard of Raid Shadow Legends yet, because you probably haven't been on the App Store as of late, and it's actually free to download right now. I've been mainly playing the campaigns, but there's also battle dungeons where you can play against 10 different bosses, battle arena where you can play PvP, among so many more modes. Although it's a mobile game, it doesn't look like it. The graphics are absolutely gorgeous. And if you're like me, and you don't want to play mobile games lying down, because you'll drop your phone on your face, Raid is actually available on your desktop as well. So check out the links in the description, because it's actually a great time to start playing because the battle pass is now on. Season one is finally live and you can win rewards such as free energy refills, gems, and new champions, which is my favorite part of the game. You can find me in the game under Brian Seeker. And if you join quick enough, you can actually join my clan. So go to the video description and click on the special links if you are a new player and you'll get 200,000 silver and one free champion, Tree Feller. This is only available for the next 30 days, so you might want to jump on this now. And you'll check out all these things in your inbox in the game waiting for you. So good luck and I hope to see you in the game. So there's the cast of Harry Potter in the Goblet of Fire. So what do you think of my choices? Please write your choices down there. I always love reading them in the comments. Please subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. We've got Umbridge up next. As always, thank you so much for watching. And thank you to my patrons. Adam Gray, Jeremy Jacobs, Jenny Edwards, Gabe Marshana, Gutter Langland, Colleen West, Marco Perry, Roland, Aidan McSheen, Shalon Hunston, Kieran Hunt, Doris Conan, Brendan Warner, Suivia, Alex Tal, Derek B. Bell, Jacob Wolf, Jerome Florich, Alexander Gardulo, and Lisa Hewer. Thank you for your support, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.